As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see. Hey, this is Rick Renner. Thank you for joining me today. I've been sitting here waiting for you to turn on the TV or your device so we can spend this time together in the Word of God. And yesterday we began a brand new series called The Point of No Return. And I want you to order the whole series. The subtitle says, Tackling Your Next New Assignment with Courage and Common Sense. Many people say, God, give me courage to do what I need to do. Well, you need courage, but you also need common sense. And when you have courage and common sense, you're able to tackle your next new assignment victoriously. This series is just so hands-on, so personal, practical. I share a lot from my own life, and I want you to order it by going online or by giving us a call. And it comes with a study guide. My friends, I love my study guides. I put so much work into these because I want to set a banquet on the table right in front of you. All you have to do is pull up to the table, sit down, get out your fork, your spoon, your knife, dive in because it's all right there. You can read it while you're seeing it or while you're hearing it. And right now we're also offering you my book by the same title, The Point of No Return. It's really one of my favorite books. And I wrote this when we first moved to the Soviet Union. It just flowed out of me because we had just really passed the point of no return. The back of the book says, Adventure beyond anything you've ever imagined awaits you. Amen. At the end of the program, we're going to tell you how you can order all of these things and other resources as well. But friends, if you need prayer, would you please reach out to us? We are praying people. Denise and I really pray for the people that reach out to us along with our entire team. And if you'll call us right now, or if you will send us your email, the moment we hear from you, we'll begin to pray for you. Maybe you can't call now, write down the number and call us later. We'll return your call if no one answers. We're very serious about responding to people who need prayer. We'll keep it confidential and we'll get in agreement with you. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, if two of you will agree as anything on earth, I'll do it. You just need somebody to get into agreement with you, and that's us. Call us or send us your email, but I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. I want you to reach for your Bible, and today we're going to return to Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to begin in verse 1, which really is the foundation for this series, which is called The Point of No Return. Listen to this verse. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead, now therefore arise. But notice the Bible says he was Moses' minister. That means he served Moses. He was Moses' companion. He was Moses' assistant. And probably wondered if one day when Moses was gone, if he would become the next leader. And one day, Moses died. God said, Moses, my servant is dead, which means something has just radically changed. An era has ended and a new era is beginning. And the spotlight shifted and fell on Joshua. Now his time of preparation is over. He doesn't have any more time to think about it, not even to pray about it. The spotlight has fallen on him. He's on the stage. And there are three million very difficult to lead Jews looking at him, which means six million eyes are looking at him. And in that moment, I'm just sure that he probably said, where is Moses? I wish I could have one more conversation with Moses. But Moses was gone. Now the spotlight shifted and it fell on Joshua. And God said, now, therefore, arise. This is your moment. I call this the point of no return. And yesterday I began with the example of when I was young and I learned to dive off the diving board. When I shared that yesterday, could you remember the first time you ever dove off of a diving board? It was New Block Park Swimming Pool, the biggest public swimming pool in Tulsa. I went there with my mother and my sisters and my cousin, and they said, come on, Ricky, you can do it. You can, you can dive off of the diving board. Well, the lower diving board was a little scary, but I did it. But the higher diving board, ugh, I remember walking up the ladder to the top of that diving board, 
walking out to the end and turning back and walking back and coming back down. I just wasn't ready to take the dive. I had an earthquake in the pit of my stomach. I went up those stairs to the end, back and down, up to the end, back and down, over and over and over, trying to work up the nerve. And finally, one day, I stood on the end of that diving board, and I remember holding my nose, saying, oh, it's so far down there, but if I don't do this, I'm never going to do it. And I finally just worked up the nerve and jumped. I took the leap. After that, it was really easy, and I learned to love to dive and became such a good swimmer, but I had to eventually take the leap. And once you jump, you can't go back. It's too late. That's the point of no return. And in life, we face many, many moments like that. Joshua was at the point of no return. He had walked out into the diving board of leadership. It was time for him to jump. The spotlight shifted to him. Maybe you're facing a point of no return in your own life right now. Maybe it's about your business. You've been saying that you want to start a new business and God's saying, do it. It's time to jump. Well, you either have to get off the board or jump. Or maybe the Lord's telling you to go into the ministry. You've been thinking about it, praying about it, pondering it for years, and now it's time to jump. You need to back off the board or you need to take the dive. There just comes a moment when you have to grab your nose and say, here I go and take the dive, take the jump. And my friends, you'll end up in a wonderful experience, a supernatural life. And yesterday, I began this series by sharing some of my own testimony about some leaps of faith that Denise and I have taken in our ministry. I began by talking about when I first walked the aisle to give my heart to Jesus. That was such a leap of faith for me to walk out into the aisle and go down to the front. Or when I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that was really taking a deep dive. It was a break with my family, a break with my church. When I went to the university and I prophesied for the very first time, oh, my heart just pounded in my chest, but I knew it was my time. I had prayed for it. I said, Lord, please use me in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And now it was my time. It took me three weeks to work up the nerve to take the dive, but finally I opened my mouth and I said, thus saith the Lord. And though it seemed like a very small step, it launched me into the realm of the supernatural. My friends, small steps are very important steps. Never diminish a small step. One step leads to another step, to another step, to another step. But you'll never get to the big project if you don't first begin with the small steps. But then years later, Denise and I were pastoring that little church in Arkansas. If you'd like to read more about it, you can get my book our autobiography, which is called Unlikely. You need to read that book. It'll really encourage you. Denise and I were doing very bad financially. We were in a very unsuccessful church. And the Lord spoke to me and said, the reason you're experiencing this lack of success is because I didn't call you to do what you're doing. This was your idea. Now, that doesn't mean God didn't do good things. He did. He touched a lot of people. They are still our friends to this day. But I was not where I was supposed to be. And the Lord said, here's what you're supposed to be doing. I want you to begin a teaching ministry across the nation. Leave Arkansas and begin a traveling ministry. Leave Arkansas? Well, even though we weren't blessed, and even though we were living in a house that should have been condemned and bulldozed, it's what we had. At least we were comfortable. And we had adapted to that level in our life. We were comfortable there, even though it was miserable. But leaving it was a little scary. Crossing the bridge from Arkansas to Oklahoma, that seemed like such a leap, even though it just took seconds to cross the bridge. But a day came when Denise and I took the leap. We packed up our belongings. We moved to Oklahoma, moved in with my parents because we didn't have any money. And my father said, Rick, what are you going to do? I said, Daddy, we're going to begin a national teaching ministry. He laughed. And I couldn't blame him for laughing. I thought it was funny, too. He said, really? Nobody even knows who you are. You've been stuck in a little church in Arkansas. You don't know anybody. Nobody knows you. How are you going to begin a traveling ministry? Well, that was my same question. But I knew the Holy Spirit had spoken to me, and I began to make phone calls and say, hey, I'd like to come preach in your church or teach in your Bible study. I even taught in a funeral home. I would take any door that opened. We just had to take the leap, and we did. Then I wrote my first book, at the urging of Pastor Bob Yandian, my dear pastor and my dear friend. He said, Rick, you need to get one of these messages into print. I didn't even know if anyone would read it. 
But this was the leap I needed to take. And then when I wrote the book and printed it, I knew we needed to do advertising. So I bought a full page ad in Charisma magazine. And back in those days, that was the biggest venue to reach the market. It was expensive. Ay, yeah, yeah, that was a leap of faith. And the top of the ad said, the book you've been waiting for. When I saw the advertisement, I was so embarrassed by it. I thought, oh, that is so arrogant. But we took the leap and guess what happened? People began calling and calling and calling. And in the first 30 days, we sold 10,000 copies of my first book. That's almost unheard of. But we had to take the leap. We had to pass the point of no return. And then God began to bless our travels. Denise and I bought a home. I was speaking 450 times a year. 900 invitations a year were coming. And in the midst of all of it, I was invited to the Soviet Union to teach for a week in the first above ground Bible school. And I told you yesterday that when I opened my Bible to speak, the Holy Spirit said, welcome to your new home. I couldn't believe it. Welcome to my new home. I don't want this to be my home. I don't want to be a missionary. I don't want to live on the mission field. I want to live in America where I'm building my ministry. But this is what the Lord told me to do. And as I told you yesterday, the first time I publicly announced that we were going to move to the Soviet Union. It was at a mission conference. Denise wasn't even with me and didn't even know that I was going to do it. But I was in the anointing. There was such a faith-filled atmosphere. It was so easy to make a faith declaration and surrender, and I did it. And when I got back to my room, I thought, what in the world did you do? Why did you publicly say that? Now you have to do it, or people are going to think you're spiritually unstable or that you're disobeying God. I had such an earthquake in the pit of my stomach, I ended up the entire night on my knees, hugging the toilet bowl, literally vomiting because I was so upset by what I had done. God wasn't making me vomit. I was just passing the point of no return and embracing what God had for us in the future. And I'm so glad I embraced it. Amen. Look at what God has done in our life. But at that moment, it felt like I was jumping off the high dive board one more time. I, yay, yay. But we did it. And then the day came when Denise and I got on the plane with our family. Oh, wow. We talked about it. We prepared for it. And the day came. Denise and I took hands one with one another and took our son's hands and our nanny was with us and we walked down the air bridge to the plane, got in our seats, put our seat belts in place and looked at each other and Denise said, Rick, we did it. We passed the point of no return. And you know what? When you finally get moving in the right direction, that's when the next step is revealed to you. When we finally got to the Soviet Union, we thought we were coming for one reason, but after being there for just a short period of time, we realized God had another purpose. The Lord spoke to us and said, I want you to take the teaching of the Bible Sunday school to every home in the Soviet Union. Well, at that time, a great revival was taking place. We couldn't raise up enough Bible teachers and preachers fast enough to go everywhere they needed to go. But through television, we could go into every home. But guess what? It was the Soviet Union. Religion had been against the law. It was an atheistic state. No one knew anything about God. And because it had been the bastion of communism, foreigners had never broadcast on television in the former Soviet Union. No one had ever done what the Lord was telling me to do. Talk about jump off the high dive. How do you go on TV in the former Soviet Union? I didn't even own a camera. I didn't have a team. We didn't have anything except a heart that was willing to say, okay, Lord, if you want us to take the dive, We'll take the dive. And if you had seen our first TV program, you would laugh your head off. It was so primitive, but that's all we had. But we had to get started. Never minimize small steps. They lead to bigger steps. And we begin to produce a program. And then I began to travel unthinkably all over the 11 time zones of the former Soviet Union. I was brand new in that part of the world. <sighs> Didn't even speak Russian yet. I do today but traveling with an assistant who didn't know much more than me. And we were going in to see big deputies of the state negotiating for TV time. They had never sold TV time because there was no capitalism in the former Soviet Union. They didn't even know what 
amount to sell the time for. We sat there and just created rate cards and prices that should be paid, walked out of one office after another office with another office and another office with hands filled with contracts for going on television where the gospel had never been broadcast, came back to our home in Latvia at that time, had to hire a team, had to hire a team had to learn how to pay taxes in a brand new economy, an economy that was crashing. We had to put together a whole team and assemble a crew that could produce these programs. And then I announced on television, I talk about another leap of faith, write to me and I'll write you back. I did not understand that Soviet people love to write letters. And in just a matter of months, we received tons of of letters, tons, boxes and boxes and boxes of letters. Then we had to take another leap of faith. We had to buy equipment so we could answer all that mail. But my friends, God's looking for somebody who will say yes. And I just want to give you some examples in the program today. For example, Noah. Noah was living his life when suddenly the word of God came to him. And God said, Noah, something's going to take place that's never happened before. There's going to be a flood. I'm going to destroy the earth because of its wickedness. And I want your family to be saved. I want you to build an ark. He probably said, an ark? What is an ark? <laughs> but the word of God came to him. And for him, it was the point of no return. Or how about Abraham? He was living in the lap of luxury with his wife, Sarai in Ur of the Chaldees, which was the biggest city in the world at that time in history and a very luxurious, rich, rich place. And Abraham and his wife were rich people, a part of that culture. And God appeared to him and said, hey, I want you to leave this place. I want you to leave your family and follow me to a new place. That was the point of no return. And because Abraham was willing to say yes and take the dive, today we are all the children of Abraham by Christ Jesus. Say amen. Or how about Moses? Moses, raised in the household of Pharaoh, had an encounter with God that totally transformed his life. Wow. Or how about Elijah? Do you think Elijah ever dreamed that he would confront the prophets of Baal, but God used him because he was willing to take the dive? Or how about Mary, the mother of Jesus? Probably 13 or 14 years old when Gabriel first appeared to her. But rather than argue, she simply said, be it unto me according to your word. And when she said that, she became impregnated by the Holy Spirit, changed human history because she was willing to say yes. Or how about Jesus' disciples. You know, when Jesus was looking for disciples, he didn't go to theological institutes or seminaries. He chose common people. Those common people had to leave where they were. It was quite a step for Peter to leave his fishing business. It was quite a step for Matthew to leave his reputation. They all had to leave something and take the dive to follow Jesus. Or how about the Apostle Paul, a man who was raised and trained theologically, he was a Pharisee. He was a man that had standing in society. He was against the Christian faith. And one day Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. He called Jesus Lord and was born again and took the dive into a brand new life. Well, you may not be a Noah that's going to be an ark, build an ark. You may not be an Abraham that's going to chart a new walk of faith. You may not be a Moses that's going to see a burning bush and set a nation free. You may not be an Elijah that's going to confront the prophets of Baal. You may not be a Mary like Mary who conceived Jesus. You may not be like one of the disciples or you may not be like the Apostle Paul, but you are you and God has a unique call for you. God wants to use you in your business. God wants to use your family. God wants to use your marriage. God wants to use you. We read, in Ephesians 2, verse 10, that you've been marvelously created in Christ Jesus to walk in what works that God ordained for you before the foundation of the world. There's some things that only you can do, and that's why you're here. But for you to do it, you're going to have to walk up the steps to the top of the diving board, walk out to the end, and say, all right, here I go. Grab your nose and say, I'm going to take the leap. 
And here's the thing. When you pass the point of no return, you enter a life that is supernatural. The Holy Spirit says, hey, I'm going to be a part of this jump. He empowers you to do what you could never do. Look at our lives. I'm coming to you today from Moscow, Russia. That's where I am. And today we have a TV ministry that's not only touching all the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, we are now owners of the largest Russian, Ukrainian speaking Christian satellite network in the world, the largest in the world. And through television, I'm speaking to you and to others all over the world. But it began with me learning to say yes to the first small steps. You just have to get started. And when we come to Joshua chapter one, that's where Joshua was. Now, after the death of Moses, oh, what a crisis moment. The servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. You've waited for this moment. This moment has come. Now it's time for you to pass the point of no return. Arise, take the leap. And in this series, we're going to learn how to take the big jump with courage and common sense. But I'll be back in just a few moments. Right now, my announcer is going to tell you about today's products and other products, and then I'll be back to pray for you. Many people know what they're supposed to do, but at times, the path to get there is like crossing the raging waters of the Jordan River at flood stage. They just don't know how to get from where they are to where they need to be. In this series, The Point of No Return, Rick takes us into the life of Joshua to learn how he stepped across the Jordan into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And God has a fabulous future waiting for you too. But to get there, you must make a decision to pass the point of no return. In this insightful 10-part series, you'll learn God is waiting for you to take the big leap into your promised land. God doesn't choose people by accident. What to do if your assignment seems impossible? How to understand your boundaries and perimeters? The five primary reasons people fail. This faith-filled series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. We're also offering the accompanying book, The Point of No Return, for $15. In his classic and updated message, Rick presents a clear, no-nonsense approach to help you prepare for and carry out each new assignment God gives you in pursuit of His purpose for your life. Don't miss these exciting offers, the series, The Point of No Return, and the companion book, The Point of No Return. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. In a culture where Santa seems to overpower the reason for the season, it's time to return to the true meaning of Christmas. In Rick Renner's timeless new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick uncovers the stunning details of the nativity story you have never heard. Details like who exactly was Joseph, the father of Jesus? Why did God choose Mary? What was the star that guided the wise men? Who were the wise men who came to see Jesus? How far did they travel? And what was the value of the gifts they brought to Christ? Through its detailed watercolor illustration, Christmas, the rest of the story, invites families to explore the true meaning of Christmas as they interact with the story across decorated pages in a coffee table size format. When you call or go online right now to pre-order this book for just $35, you will receive the eternal story of Christmas, now beautifully told in this timeless keepsake. This is a sweeping portrait of the Christmas story, allowing readers to reflect on why Jesus came at the dawn of the first century and ultimately the reason for his birth. With stunning illustrations and nearly 300 pages, your family can create a tradition that will last for generations. Great as a gift or enhancing your own traditions, Pre-order the book today. Christmas, the rest of the story for just $35. Call now or go to renner.org to order. Don't miss this special Christmas offer. This is Rick Renner and my friends right now, we're in the very middle of our ministry expansion project. It's three phases. Phase one was building the new studio in Moscow. You helped us do that. Thank you. Phase two was finishing the interior of the studio. You helped us do that. 
Thank you. Now we're in phase three, which is retiring the debt on the ministry headquarters in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our ministry has never had debt. The reason we've been able to do what we've done is because we've never had to service debt. When we built our building in Riga, we did it cash. When we built the building in Moscow, it is amazing that we were able to do it with cash. And now we want to retire the debt on the Tulsa headquarters building so we can liberate all that money to really take the teaching of the Bible around the world. You know, it's never about buildings. It's about having an anchor where the Word of God can go forth. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls from people who are literally calling us from all over the world. And from that facility, we're producing TV programs, social media, we're fulfilling orders for books and giving away thousands and thousands of different resources to people who are reaching out to us because they believe that we provide teaching they can trust. And it's very important that we retire that debt as quick as possible because it will liberate funds for the preaching of the word to the ends of the earth. And that is what we're called to do. And today I want to ask you to please continue to be a part of our giving team so we can retire the debt on the Tulsa building and then we'll be finished with the ministry expansion project. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for becoming a part of the giving team. We have had such a good time in the Word of God today. And when we come back tomorrow, we're going to see how to take that leap of faith, practical steps in stepping forward to do what God is asking you to do. You need to pass the point of no return. And I want you to get the whole series by the same title, The Point of No Return. The subtitle is Tackling Your Next New Assignment with Courage and Common Sense. You have to have both. But it's 10 parts, and it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you right now my book by the same title, The Point of No Return. The back of the book says, Adventure beyond anything you've ever imagined awaits you. And my friends, that really is the truth. And hey, if you need prayer, reach out to us right now. Maybe you're trying to pass the point of no return. You're out on the end of the diving board looking down, wondering, should I take the leap? Yes, you should take the leap. You just need courage and common sense. And maybe you need somebody to pray with you for that courage and common sense to be ignited inside you. I promise you that when you take a step of faith, you will step into a supernatural life. The Holy Spirit is waiting to take the jump with you. But let us know how to pray for you by calling us right now or by going online and sending us an email. But Father, I thank you that in my life, you've encouraged me to pass the point of no return again and again. You're going to ask me to do it again. It's just part of the life of faith. And today, Father, I pray for my friend that's listening to me. Holy Spirit, I ask you to release in them courage. I ask you to give them common sense that they can tackle this assignment victoriously in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this. Amen. Well, tomorrow we're going to pick up right here, but I want you to remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.